What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be an adventure for all of us. I don't know if it's because I am uh, sunburned or sun-kissed, but I just want to try something different. You know, normally I do the single roundups or the album roundups, and I say yeehaw or yee nah, but there's so much new music I want to talk about, and I don't necessarily think whether it's good or bad is the most interesting thing to say about a lot of these songs. So I'm just going to reflect on a bunch of different music. And I guess this video is something like, I have things to say about these 10 or 11 or 15 songs. However many I have written on that piece of paper, let's just go on a little journey and talk about them. I'll just mention the song and then say why I think it's interesting. Because there's a lot of interesting music that's out right now. Specifically, um, I'm obsessed with the Noah Khan Deluxe album. <laughs> I cannot wait to see him live and that's going to be a great day when that finally happens. Which is a good segue into the sponsor of today's video, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with over 28 million downloads and it has 70,000 plus events added to it every day. Everything from music to sports to comedy, anything you want to go get a ticket for and watch, you can use SeatGeek to do it. You know, recently I've gotten to go to the Eras Tour, which was amazing. I got to see Luke Combs at Nissan Stadium, which was amazing. And as I scroll through the app, I see, look, Noah Khan is coming here in the fall, and I definitely want to be at that show. And SeatGeek just makes the process easy. They put all the different tickets in one place. They have a rating system from 1 to 10 to let you know whether the ticket is a good deal. The good deals are green, the less good deals are in red. And every ticket is backed by a buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return tickets ahead of time using swaps. And you know I came through for you guys, so you can use my code GradySmith for $20 off your order at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek using my code GradySmith. So be sure to hit the link in the description and download the app. And with that said, let's reflect on some new music. The first song I want to talk about is Chipping Mill by the Turnpike Troubadours. Drank my way through a hurricane. So Turnpike has recently made a comeback, and I don't even think I've talked about their song Mean Old Son that they dropped a few weeks ago. Head long for the wall now, honey. Still coming up like but it's kind of a downer of a song. As a comeback, it wasn't what I was expecting. But Shipping Mill, which was written by Lance Rourke and R.C. Edwards, is really kind of the comeback song that I think I was looking for. Melodically, I think it's a lot more fun. You got a little more tempo, a little more of that stomping, honky-tonk, breezy energy that the Turnpike Troubadours can do well. But moreover, you have a lyric that is sort of Evan Felker maybe owning some of the issues that kept the band from being together and almost derailed them completely a few years ago. Talking about selling his soul to rock and roll and drinking his way through a hurricane as he was thinking about his wedding ring and all the mistakes that he'd made, maybe referencing when they went on tour with Miranda Lambert and then suddenly they were dating and then suddenly him and his wife weren't together and now everything's back and that kind of fits with his own story because the hook is, but I always saved the best for you. I always kept the best for you. I'm actually surprised more people aren't talking about this song because I feel like it's a very interesting kind of confessional of Evan owning, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes, but ultimately I sought reconciliation with my wife and family, which has happened. And there has been a reconciliation with the band and they're putting out music and this song feels celebratory. And I just way prefer it to Mean Old Son in every way. And the fiddle on it is so gorgeous. I mean, Kyle Nix, his fiddle is always great, just like it was on his solo project. There's also a new one from Carly Pierce and Chris Stapleton called We Don't Fight Anymore. We don't yell, cause what the hell? Longtime viewers of the channel know exactly what I'm going to say about this song. And no, it is not that it is a beautiful and stark and relatively surprising ballad from Carly Pierce. I mean, she has so much momentum and a song like this is kind of a risk. No, I am here to whine about Chris Stapleton once again giving us a feature that is background vocals, which he has now done on Kaylee Hammock's Small Town Hypocrite, the country radio release of Adele's Easy On Me, as well as Taylor Swift's I Bet You Think About Me. I mean, he even kind of did it on that one Morgan Wallen song on Dangerous. And now this Carly Pierce song. I'm just confused by this. Like, it's not a big deal. It doesn't bother me that much, but I think it is so strange 
the marketing technique of getting Chris Stapleton to be featured on your song such that you're marketing it this way and the artists do these big posts. It's like, it's such an honor to have Chris on my song. And then he doesn't even get like a line to himself. He's got one on this Carly song in the bridge, but he's not like he gets a verse. It's not like there's an interplay in the duet. He's just kind of there quietly in the background. And then meanwhile, when he collabs with pop artists, whether it's Pink or like Ed Sheeran and Bruno Mars or Justin Timberlake, Chris is out there wailing and singing his face off. And I want him to do that on these country songs. You know, some people say he's trying to be like Vince Gill and let the artist be the one in the spotlight, but then like, don't be featured on the track. And also, he kind of doesn't have like that sterling of a radio career. It's not like he's a hit maker like Luke Bryan or Kenny Chesney where whatever Chris Stapleton does goes to number one. So I don't even really get practically what this does for these artists that just get Chris on their song. Like it's not like it's gonna help at radio especially. But it's definitely a flex to say you sang with him, but I just wish you sang with him. That's my thought on that song. Otherwise, beautiful, sure. But Chris, please, we all wanna hear a run like you do on Tennessee Whiskey. Or at least I do. While we're talking about duets, let's talk about the re-release of Riley Green's Different Round Here, now featuring Luke Combs. This song is interesting to me because it's over three years old, and that's really when it had a viral moment on TikTok. Obviously, some great decisions were made by Riley's team to get Luke Combs featured on the track. Riley's opening for his tour. Luke is like one of the biggest stars that there is. And so that's gonna get the song a lot of exposure, but it's not like it's a crazy reinvention of it now that it features him. I am more fascinated about this increasing trend of release date agnosticism that audiences seem to have. Last year, I made a video about country songs that got a second chance. And in it, I talked about how I was noticing that certain songs like Megan Trainor's title, or most notably Fleetwood Mac's Dreams, were getting a whole second wind from their prominence on TikTok, and how that was seeping into country music. And this is a great example of that. Riley has been trying to find some momentum at radio for a long time, and yet his most viral and popular track has seemed to be different round here for years, even though it wasn't a single off his original album. So now they're just repackaging it, re-releasing it, and seemingly it's working. And I really think audiences increasingly don't care when a song came out, nor do they expect to hear everything when it came out, unless you're like, the levels of Taylor Swift. There's so much damn music that most people ignore most of it and then find it whenever they find it. And I suppose even Taylor Swift is actually included in this trend because Cruel Summer, her song from Lover, which is now three albums ago and four years ago that this song came out, that is now released as a single and it's currently the number three song on all of Spotify. So even though she is in her Midnight's album cycle and her Speak Now album is about to come out in two weeks, She's now pushing Cruel Summer as a single and it's flying up the charts. And our audience is sitting there being like, but wait, that's not part of the correct era. No, I don't think they really care. That's what I mean when I say release date agnosticism. So you know, in like 2027, when series of episodes becomes a giant viral hit, you know, I'll be ready. I'm stuck in a never ending season of Survivor Mexico. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But thank you. We're past 10,000 streams on Spotify. And if you don't get that reference, you need to go watch my video, I Became a Country Star in 24 Hours. One other duet I gotta mention is Lauren Elena and Lainey Wilson's Thickest Thieves. The Southern Girls with thick as thieves, with thick as thieves. It's no secret that Lainey Wilson's Heart Like a Truck kind of went viral on social media because a lot of the internet decided they liked Lainey's booty. And she smartly leaned into that trend. And now Lauren Elena is kind of doing the same thing with her with this song, Thick as Thieves, which is about Southern girls with some junk in the trunk and also having each other's back. You know, they're thick as thieves and they're thick with two C's as thieves. I like the song more than I want to admit. I think it's kind of smart and cheeky. Haha. <laughs> I literally did not mean cheeky, but now I do. But I am frustrated by the rollout of it because they're trying to make this viral dance happen on TikTok and I just want to like help them do it differently. Like this song got the internet talking, this picture of both of them from behind, just a candid shot backstage, got the internet talking, but then this dance has not done that. And Lauren's team is pushing it really hard, which that's commendable. They have Lauren and Lainey, you know, doing the dance and trying to teach a tutorial, asking the internet to duet. Lauren's got Kane Brown trying to do it and Blake Shelton, and they're really trying to make this trend happen. Here's my unsolicited advice. Don't do it like this. 
TikTok doesn't work from the top down. I feel like it's not as cool in 2023 to say, this is the official dance, don't y'all wanna join us? That might feel a little too fixed or a little too corporate or cringy to people. I think what they probably should have done is found a mid-sized choreography account. Some girl with like 80,000 followers on TikTok, maybe work with her and figure out a dance. Pay her like two weeks into the rollout to actually do a dance to this song and then let Lauren find it and be like, oh my gosh, this girl made a dance to my song. I should try to learn this. And then, you know, her learn her own dance and get the ball rolling as if this came from the people. I think generally viral trends kind of have to happen organically, but if they're not gonna happen organically, they have to seem like they're happening organically. And for the record, I don't begrudge the labels manipulating us like that. They've always manipulated us like that. There's always been an idea of making music feel more authentic than it is when really often it's rolled out. And you know, I respect that kind of Machiavellian behavior. So I guess that was my entire thought I wanted to say about Thick as Thieves. Cause I do think this song could be a giant viral trend. I mean, if Heart Like a Truck can be a booty anthem, certainly a song about booties can be a booty anthem. The next song is Till the End of My Days by Brennan Edwards. You drifted in my aura of sorrow that tried to hide behind a smile. I am mentioning this song to you simply because it is one of my favorite songs, if not my very favorite song that I have heard in 2023. But Grady, it sounds like Tyler Childers. It's too folksy. It's too singer songwritery. I'm so tired of artists just singing with an acoustic guitar. It's become lame. That's what everybody's doing ever since Zach Bryan got popular. To the people that want to comment that, there you go. I'm acknowledging I hear you. I'm also gonna say you're wrong. At least about this song, you are. I acknowledge there's a lot of Zachalites out there that are playing E minor and screaming about their heavy eyes into the sky. And I 100% would never put Brennan Edwards in that category. Brennan, if you didn't know, I mentioned him in my Who's Up Next in Country Music video. I did these kind of two companion videos where I covered like 45 or 50 artists or something. He's from Virginia, pretty bluegrassy. His songs are locked and loaded and ready to go. When you listen to his Red Barn sessions and you hear me and the devil or so long or this song till the end of my days, you hear a man that sings with conviction, whose words are poetic and his music's quite hopeful. I feel like almost every song ends on this hopeful swing, despite maybe some sadder subject matter. And to me, that's quite different than a lot of early Childers, early Zach. This song specifically, I think is a beautiful, timeless, little poem you could take shade of gray days turn them into blue skies and about a woman that drifted into his life took away his sadness and his commitment to be with her until the end of time till the world's washed away and the moon and the sun collide and once more with God they abide he will be with her when I hear the song I think it will be and here's my Tyler Childers connection I think it will be like a Lady May that it is a sleeping giant. Do I think it's ever gonna be a radio hit? Hell no. But I think in 10 years time, it will be a kind of folk country anthem. And Brennan is in the same mix of Virginia artists like Jake Cohn and Chris Hunt. And the next person I'm gonna talk about, Maggie Antone, who just put out the next song I wanna talk about. Long title, If Only You Played Football As Well As You Played Girls. If only you played football as well as you played girls. The thing that I think is interesting about this song is just that it's out and I really like it and I think Maggie Antone now having some original music out in the world is good for music. You know, she had a cover album last year, but this is her first original and it's funny. People on TikTok and social media are calling her Trailer Swift because it's just a little sassy, simple tell-off but I think it's recorded quite nicely. I think her voice and the lilt in it sounds awesome. And I love to see the Virginia movement of country going strong. We also got, you know, little bands like 49 Winchester and Morgan Wade in the mix here. And in general, I just like it. I recommend it. If you ever want to know what I'm recommending, go check out my Spotify playlist, Grady Smith, favorite country music. It's sometimes updated. There's sometimes recommendations for you there. Brian Kelly's See You Next Summer is another interesting one to me. See you next summer. Longtime viewers of the channel have followed the Brian Kelly saga from the extended hiatus of Florida Georgia Line to the seemingly more permanent hiatus of Florida Georgia Line to Brian releasing that solo project Sunshine State of Mind, but then after releasing it, leaving Warner Music Nashville and then Tyler Hubbard coming out with solo music and it being very successful, stuff like Five Foot Nine as well as Dancing in the Country, as Brian signed a new deal with Big Machine, who Florida Georgia Line had been signed to, and now Brian is putting out music and See You Next Summer seems to be his first song that is 
actually go into radio. Now this song was written by Hardy, Hillary Lindsay, and David Garcia, and I totally understand why it is a radio single. It's very radio ready. But it does bum me out that nothing from the whole like Beach Cowboy project was sent to radio because that thing was so freaking unique. I still really enjoy that album. And people that listened to Brian Kelly's first album, I think everyone was like, whoa, that is different. That is interesting. This kind of beach country thing, he did very well. It's so confusing to me that they never pushed that album really. I don't know what Warner Brothers was doing. but So for Brian's sake, I think I'm happy that he's out of something where they weren't gonna push it. However, I also wish for the people's sake, they got something a little beachier and cooler than See You Next Summer because it's not that interesting to me. I guess my hope would be, if this does hit, that we get a lot more of that kind of weirder beach cowboy flavor in whatever album were to come from this. The next song is Gabby Barrett's Glory Days. This is as good as it gets. I don't know what I would change. This is a solid kind of inspiring single from Gabby. It reminds me a lot of the good ones. I think her voice sounds good on it. I think it's a cool song about appreciating what she has. But mostly I'm just acknowledging that Gabby is interesting to me because I feel like she is a sleeping giant in terms of her success on streaming and as an artist. Like she's not really in any headlines. She's not really blowing up the meme world. You don't really hear about her the same way you hear about Lainey Wilson, who's like in the zeitgeist, or Kelsey Ballerini, who's in the zeitgeist. When you look at Gabby's streaming numbers, you're like, damn. Both I Hope and The Good Ones were giant smashes. And then at the same time, she's like gotten married. She has a kid. I think she's expecting another. And that girl's wasting no freaking time. And I kind of admire it. I know some people are probably like, she's too young, but I'm like, you got one life to live and she's freaking doing it. And I'm interested to see if that sort of maintains with this song. I mean, this song is really about like, she's in the best part of her life and appreciating that. And maybe this will become a giant smash like the good ones did as well. She's like one of those shows on the History Channel or the Discovery Channel that you would would never think about about some sort of blue collar trade but then when you actually look at the ratings you're like damn gold rush has been the number one show on friday nights for like a decade that's kind of how gabby barrett is and i guess she's gold mine that was the name of her album wow gabby barrett you should have called it gold rush i would have been able to make this connection sooner after that is pecos on the rooftops 5 a.m I, for years now, have sort of avoided the subject of Pecos and the Rooftops because I totally hear the cool edginess of this damn song. But when I hear other songs by Pecos and the Rooftops like Time for Wine, which I thought sounded confusing and shapeless and out of tune, I have been confused. Because it's almost like I got the next generation of Cobros, like a bunch of Texas A&M guys being like, Grady, Pecos and the Rooftops is amazing. And I'm sitting there like, what are you hearing that I'm not? There must be a vibe at a live show because recorded, I don't get it. But I'm pleased to say that I don't know what they have done to change up their production or if they're writing differently or whatever, but all these new songs that Pegos is dropping, I'm like, okay, these are songs. Like this is how, these songs have a shape, they have a feel, they have a structure that I can kind of relate to. They sound a lot better produced. And this song 5am is a jam. Yes, now I can kind of hear you in this world of Co Wetzel and Giovanni and the Hired Guns and whatnot. And so... Um, I suppose that is faint praise to be like, it's not bad, um, but it's not. And now I'm like, okay, I can dive in with a little bit more curiosity. And then to finish it off, we got to mention two songs, Morgan Wallen's Last Night and Luke Combs' Fast Car, which as of this week are the number one and two songs across all genres on Billboard's Hot 100. And that is the first time since 1981 that two different country songs have held the top two spots in the country. Now I understand, Last Night is one of the poppiest songs that Morgan has ever put out, even with some hip hop influence in there. And I understand that Luke Combs' fast car cover is only country because he's a country artist. But whatever, I think this is an interesting moment in culture where Country is the cool kid. I think we are officially back in like the 90s where suddenly country became the cool kid at the party. It wasn't trying to be everybody else. Everyone else was trying to get in to country when they had the big blocky shirts the way Garth Brooks would wear or the flames like Brooks and Dunn when line dancing was really cool. People wanted in on country and we were in the exact same spot of pop culture right now. And yes, if you are a core country fan, it's easy to roll your eyes at the sudden Yellowstoneification of pop culture and the way that all these people that you know didn't listen to country suddenly have a cowboy hat on in their TikToks and being like, I'm gonna go to stagecoach. But come on, drop the cynicism for two seconds and acknowledge 
That's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that we are the true believers and we are here in this genre and love it and it's our favorite music and now everyone else is getting it. And look, they'll go away. We're gonna become the uncool kid again in five years and that's gonna be fine, but let's just enjoy our moment of being the ones that really know about this genre that everyone else is just sort of super into right now. And last night, I mean, wow, what a smash. It's now been number one for 12 weeks. And then Fast Car, similarly, has just taken off. And if you watch my interview with Luke Combs, he acknowledges there's all sorts of restrictions that he has because it's a cover song that make this a very challenging song to promote. And so this is as organic of a rise as you could ever hear. Although I must say, I a little disagreed with his interpretation of the song. Um, you go watch my interview. I think there's more kind of like there's a backdrop of an alcoholic family, but then there's also a love story. But anyway, I'm curious to know your thoughts on that. The really crazy thing is that both those guys have other singles, also at Country Radio. Country Radio is doing a cool thing right now where it seems to really be responding to songs that people are passionate about. And like Luke Combs currently has Love You Anyway climbing the charts, as well as Fast Car being one of the biggest songs at radio. And then Five Leaf Clover is kind of waiting in the wings. And it wouldn't shock me if Where the Wild Things Are takes off along with that. Meanwhile, Morgan Wallen has Thinking About You that's kind of just organically happening, even as Everything I Love is his official single they're pushing, even as Last Night is still huge at radio, and I'm sure there's a lot of residual play for stuff like Thought You Should Know and One Thing at a Time. If you follow country radio, you know there's kind of a system where it almost feels like the major labels are just passing the peace pipe around and it's like, you get your week at number one, now give it to Sony and they'll get their week at number one. Then give it to Universal and they'll get their week at number one. And it's so lame and no one in the public really cares about these industry bragging rights the way that the labels do. So I frankly love that for at least this summer, it seems like radio is just being like, look, if the people are all streaming this, this is what they want and we're gonna play that. Now, there's a bunch of notes that I decided not to talk about in this video, but I will say them each with one sentence. Levi Turner's Allergy Season album is out and he is signed to Zach Bryan's label and my favorite song is Allergy Season. Jelly Roll's album was extremely huge and when you compare it to the sales data of other albums, one of the most eye-catching release numbers of the year. I wanna say a paragraph about all these. Paul Revere by Noah Khan is my favorite song on the deluxe. Coulter Wall's new music is hidden. So wow, there was my first uh, experiment with this format of a video where I just kinda of talk about the songs and if it's about the music, it's about the music. If it's about the marketing, it's about the marketing. If it's about the culture, it's about the culture. But those are my thoughts on those songs. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for more country content coming soon. Love y'all, bye. Mm -hmm.